Okay, okay. I'm going to just go on and get started. Uh, what's up? What's up? How y'all <laughs> doing? Um, y'all know this Josh from Keep It Techie. And I want to welcome you guys to my fifth Tech Talk. Um, and this will be, a, you know, another stream where I, I interview another person that's in the IT field. You know what I'm saying? As you guys know, I'm, I've been working in IT field for, you know, over 10 years. Uh, in different positions and everything, and I I want to start up these streams so I can you know just bring other people that's actually in the field so they could give their experiences as well as you know um, their accomplishments and all that stuff, and just so to help people try to get into the IT field if they're trying to choose that career path. So I want to go down and welcome you guys. Um, and welcome my guest. Um, my, today's guest is obviously you guys probably know him, uh, G. Lowry. He's he's uh, on YouTube. Uh, he has a, a YouTube channel called Tech G. You know what I'm saying? That I really like and I really try to push his, his content because he's really doing something special in, in on YouTube, in my opinion, by, you know, teaching people how to actually get these certifications so they can get into the field. But um, thank you for being here, G. Lowry. I appreciate it. No problem, bro. What's going on with you, though? Hanging in there, hanging in there, man. <laughs> but um, so let's just roll right into the to the interview. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is allow uh, the, the guests to introduce themselves as well as give a little bit about their background. And you can also roll right into how you got into IT. Um. You know, the purpose of that channel is just like you said, is to teach entry level IT to, uh, you know, people who are considering going to the industry or switching over to the industry or whatever the case may be. People who just may be interested in general. So that's the main purpose. Now, how I actually got started in IT was probably uh, about 22 years ago or about 20 years ago when I was at, when I was in college at Tuskegee University. Um, I was majoring in aerospace engineering because I thought I was going to be a rocket scientist working for NASA. And um, you know, th that didn't work out too well because it, it was just it was just too much math. It, it was just kind of overloading me. But there was one class I did take a, a computer science class. I think I took C plus plus or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know. I don't remember how I did in that class. It, it obviously wasn't good, but <laughs> that was my that was like my first introduction into the world of IT. Then after that, after college in 2002, I ended up joining the Army. And so I did 13 years in military and I went into the IT industry in, in the military. And so um, that's pretty much what I've been doing ever since uh, from 2002 to present day. So 18 years now, I've been in IT. And like I said, my main thing is um as far as content creation is really just to talk about it from the entry level standpoint to educate people on it who may think it is just this big scary industry that only the elite people in society can do and i'm like no it's really not like that you know if you're willing to you know sit back and learn you'll you'll see how quote unquote easy it can be you know, depending upon, mm -hmm. you know, your dedication to learning the, uh, the industry. So that, that's kind of what I do. Okay, cool, cool. Well, um, based on what you said, I wanted to ask you a, a question because, um, you know, I did time in the military as well. And I understand, you know, the process of, you know, how to get people in, basically. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to ask, um, did you start off in IT when you joined the military or did they put you in some... Well, <laughs> Did you well, cross train? Actually, well, actually, when I was when I was initially going to join the army, I was actually wanting to join the infantry. Okay, you know, this is like right after nine eleven. I want to go kick in doors, be an American hero, and all that stuff, right? But my mm -hmm. uncle, who was in the army, who, who was actually my recruiter, he talked me out of it. He told me to go, you know, you know obviously take the ASVAB test, mm -hmm. you know the. Is it the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, it's basically a test to uh, determine what jobs in the military that you may qualify for. Mm -hmm. And so I scored pretty high. I think I got like a 95 on that test without even trying, right? 
And so, you know, if you get a 95, you can pretty much do whatever you want in the military. And mm. so at that time, I had actually signed up to do what is called, it was 31 Papa. It was a microwave systems operator. Now, okay. it's, not, it's not microwave in the sense that you're popping popcorn. We're dealing with microwave technologies that deal with tropo, atmospherics, bouncing signals off the sky, line of sight stuff. It's very similar to what satellite communications people deal with, except you're not blasting the signals into space. Like I said, you might be blasting them off the atmosphere, then they're just bouncing around like that. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And then what happened was when I got to my, I, I went to airborne school and started jumping out of airplanes. And so I thought I was going to go to Fort Bragg to go spend the rest of my life being an airborne ranger, jumping out of planes and all that stuff. Yeah. But they ended up sending me back to Fort Gordon. And when I got to my first duty station, they had me cutting grass for my first year. Oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm literally doing KP detail, cutting grass, ceremonial detail, all this crazy crap. So in my downtime, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I just started kind of tinkering away with computers on my own, reading about A+. plus, You know, just reading various things here and there mm -hmm. until it came down to the point where there was like, um, I can reclass. Yeah. So I did that for about two years. And then actually in 2000, no, three years, actually in 2005, I actually reclassed into the 25 Bravo MOS, which is the IT MOS. Okay. So that's when I officially started doing IT. But before that, when I was in the army, I was mm -hmm. kind of doing it on my own a little bit. So I did that. And, you know, I did the stereotypical route, help desk stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I ran a help desk when I was downrange in Afghanistan. I uh, worked with the NSA. I taught IT in the army, you know, wow. as, I, as an AIT instructor. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so that, that's that's pretty much what I did in the military. So and, and how I actually got started in IT. So okay, yeah, and this that's kind of that, that's the reason I asked because I know when I joined, I I started off as a ninety two alpha, and uh, I did I didn't I didn't um, switch in my OSs though. I stayed ninety two alpha, and then I went uh, eighty nine Bravo, which is ammunition. Um, and I've always did IT outside of the military. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. did, you know, I I went to school and all that stuff, certifications, all that stuff outside of the military. So I understand how yeah. that go. You know what I'm saying? So, but, um, so let's go on and roll into this then. Um, so if someone was trying to get into IT, where do you think they should start? Um, so you got to first ask yourself, what do you want to do in IT? So meaning, do you want to become a computer scientist? Do you want to become a computer programmer? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to, you know, start off doing maybe tier one help desk type of stuff to working your way up to being a sysadmin, net admin, or going to cybersecurity? You know, whichever path you choose or is, is pretty much going to dictate how you're going to start. So the computer scientist role, well, if you want to go into that realm, where you're actually the person that's designing the motherboard and all the various components that make a computer work, you're going to have to go to college mm -hmm. and, get, and yep. get degreed up in that. And that's going to require a lot of math classes that you're going to have to get engaged in. A lot of those same math classes that I was taking when I was an aerospace engineering student, calculus, derivative equations, statics, you're gonna have to get some of that in your life. Yeah. And if you want, if you want to design video games, where you're the actual person doing it, you may have to go to college as well. Because I know a lot of you guys might like to play Madden. You know, you hit the little button and the football goes, and then the wide receiver catches it. There's a whole bunch of math that goes yeah. into that that you're gonna have to learn and compute into these programs to make it be able to do that thing. Now, if you want to go straight into programming, you know there are a couple ways you can do it. You can, you know, do the self-taught method. You can go to college or you can go to boot camp. You know, it, it all depends on how you want to enter it. But um, most people that I encounter, they just want to go straight to getting a like a tier one, tier two uh, IT support job, help desk style job where you're running around, plugging in network cables, resetting passwords, fixing printers, you know, you know, just doing some basic, quote unquote, grunt work. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a college degree. You can come straight out of high school and do that type of stuff or, you know, maybe even get into it before you graduate high school. And um, 
and you know you just go out there and just get some basic certifications uh a plus net plus security plus or you know depending upon how how li um how literate you are when it comes to computers i tell people you know if you don't know anything about computers and all you know how to do is just hit the power button and go watch a youtube video then i will say start with it fundamentals mm -hmm. and then graduate to a plus net plus security plus and beyond so it really just depends on what avenue of approach are you trying to go at it and what is your actual end destination that you would like to see yourself because like i said let's just say you want to become like a chief information security officer or chief technology officer you know these are the the people that sit at the board with the ceo you're gonna have to go to college to do all that yep. <laughs> so it, it just depends on what it is that you want to do okay okay cool cool so um So uh, let me let me roll in. It is then um, since you brought up degrees um, and sorry, I got distracted because I got a phone call, but um, degrees over certifications, because I've ran into a lot of people that have worked in the field that have uh, only certifications. And I've ran mm -hmm. into a lot of people that, you know, only have degrees uh, and some with both. Uh, what do you think is the best route for someone to take it versus, uh, I guess, degrees, certifications, or both? You know, or well, well, well to, to answer that question is going to go back to what I said in the last one. Okay, what yeah. do you want to do on IT? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm like being serious because it's really not just degrees and certs. It's actually a trifecta. Degrees, certifications, and experience. Yes. So yep. you got to factor all three of those into the equation. And so it really depends on what do you want to do. Like, let's just say, um, like, take me for instance. So I have an MBA and also have a master's degree in information technology. Okay. Now, if I want to become a college professor, which I've actually applied for college professor jobs and actually was on the verge of getting hired by one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, University of Central Florida, where I'm at down here, they were actually going to hire me, but I didn't take the job because they um, one of the requirements was they were going to want me to go back and get my PhD. And I was like, are you going to pay for it? <laughs> and I yeah. never really got a straight answer out of that. So to be a college professor teaching IT or working at a tech college or whatever, whatever, you're going to need a degree for that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And a degree is going to be the most important attribute in order for you to get hired, then mm -hmm. followed by your certifications, then followed by your experience. Now, if you want to like do like my youngest brother, my youngest brother, he works in IT. He does cybersecurity. He's a college dropout, dropped out his freshman year in college, like over 10 something years ago. He works in IT doing cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. he, um, he makes about $90,000 a year and he right. only has a handful of certifications but he has a few years worth of experience. So you can, you, some, some cybersecurity roles may or may not require a degree, but if you don't have it and you can trump the degree with certs and or experience, then that might enable you to get hired. Well, let's just knock it down to an entry level job. Let's just say you're brand new to IT. You want to get the, the basic bare bones help desk job. A lot of these jobs may require you to have like A plus, net plus, but what if you don't have those, but you've been tinkering around on computers for like six years, you know, this stuff better than somebody who just went and took the test. Mm -hmm. Your experience might trump your certification, <laughs> somebody with a certification, because a certification at the end of the day, is just a piece of paper saying that you passed the test mm -hmm. and you understand these, these basic things, but it'll never be greater than experience saying yeah. that you can actually go out there and demonstrate. But the thing I tell people is if you really want to figure out which one is most important, go to Indeed, a job website, hunting website, and just type in the type of IT job that you may be interested in and then read the job description. They'll tell you right there in the job description, what do you need? Experience, degrees, certifications, and you just pull up, you know, about 10 of these things, compare them, and you'll kind of get, you'll, you'll get a feeling as to what is oftentimes the most preferred attribute, but is is really like I say, it's really a combination: degrees, experience, and certifications. I'll put I'll personally put 
experience and certifications over degree over degrees, mm-hmm. but degrees really comes into play depending upon what exactly do you want to do in IT, and that's going to dictate whether or not you actually need a degree. You need to figure out how to work that into your life if that's what you want to do. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense, man. Um, so let me let me go down and uh and ask you this since um. Since my channel is mainly about the Linux operating system, you know, I, I try to kind of incorporate that into, you know, the conversations. Uh, do you have any experience working with Linux or, um, you know, do you? I don't really actually thoughts? have a, well, I don't really have a lot of experience dealing with Linux. Um, it was just like something that I never really had to deal with. Mm-hmm. But um, as of lately, I've been trying to learn more about it because you know, the way technology is shifting, Linux is becoming ingrained into every little thing out there somehow, yeah. some way. So, you know, you know, they got the Linux plus certification from CompTIA, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. lets you know it's getting real out there. So um, it's one of these things, like I watch your channel and I'm actually in the process of, you know, doing what I can to learn it on my own because eventually I plan to go get that certification as well. But just over my past years, I was never really in a position where I had to deal with Linux like that. So I never learned it. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, yeah. Well, um, let me ask you this, though. Uh, what what certifications do you currently have if you want to, you know, share? Uh, I got IT Fundamentals, uh, A+, Net+, Security+, Plus, It'll, or, you know, Information Technology, Information Library. It's like a business slash IT type of certification mm-hmm. and a CC and CCNA. Um, I got the CCNA years ago. I actually got to go redo it because, you know, it's one yeah. of those things. Where if you don't use it, you lose it type of deal. And I uh-huh. kind of lost, lost it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, technically I got it, but I got to go redo it from my own personal uh-huh. satisfaction. Yeah. So that's what I, yeah. Cause that technology constantly, you know, changing and the questions they update the tests and all that stuff but how difficult was it to study for these certifications that you do have uh currently or the ones that you uh well it depends on how you choose to go about studying for them Mm -hmm. so if you want to go get a you'll get you a book like this i don't know if you can see it on camera here yeah yeah you know, I got plenty of these books laying around my office. This is some of the most dry, boring reading you'll ever deal with in your life. There, there's not a whole bunch of pictures in there. <laughs> Me, I read through these things. By the time I hit page two, I'm, I'm on my, I'm halfway asleep. Yeah. So you can go go out of that method, or you can go out of the method of watching stuff on YouTube or Udemy, or signing up for somebody's class to learn this stuff. Um, it just depends on what's more comfortable for you and how you learn. Mm-hmm. And me, like I say, I'm not, I like to read, but I can't read this stuff. So I have to, I have to watch videos. I have to, you know, write down my notes, make my little flashcards. That's, that's kind of helps me prepare. And if there's like a, a simulation, a simulator out there somewhere like packet tracer or mm-hmm. whatever, I have to download that and get busy click clacking away on that. Because I don't have a router and a switch uh, or a networking router and yeah. switch that's sitting around in my house, mm-hmm. um, which I actually need to go get one. I'm actually thinking about building one up in here so I can play around with it. But um, and so I, I got to do those things. You know what I'm saying? That that's just that's what works for me. So everybody's different. There is no one size fits all approach to how you study for these things. But I guess the only so called one size fits all approach is you have to make time to study. Yep. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's not really just, and w- well, there's a little caveat to that. It's not really just you making time to study. What I tell people is, let's just say you want to go get your, your A plus certification, right? Or your network plus, since that's only one test. A plus is technically two tests. Mm-hmm. What you would do, I tell people, go ahead and buy your voucher and schedule your exam. Yeah. So that you give yourself a deadline to study because, what I've noticed over the years, people will study and then they'll procrastinate and then yep. they'll, they'll just drag the process out. But if you give yourself a hard deadline, like like by December 1st, I got to go take this test. Well, you know, between whatever today's date is and December 1st, 
you have to get it in the best you can get it in because you've already paid for this exam mm -hmm. and you don't, you don't get your money back. Yep. So that's, um, that's, that's, that's the one thing that is a one size fits all approach is setting an actual deadline by paying for the test. And then, you know, going out there and then figuring out how you need to get all this information to your brain so that you can understand it, not just memorize it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people they'll go out there and download these test banks, yeah. they'll just study all these questions and that's cool. You might be able to do that to pass a cert, but do you actually know what the hell you just memorized? Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing this to go get a job, well, guess what? An employer, they may question you about the stuff that, you know, you just sat there and memorized just to pass the certification. They might ask you questions. And if, if you don't really comprehend the stuff, then, you know, what, what, what did you really do at the end of the day? Other than you have a cert that you can just throw on your resume that isn't really helping you get hired. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh I'm glad you, you know, gave that good advice, man, because that's one of the things I I try to, you know, push It's just, you know, uh, it's plenty of resources out here. You know, what I'm saying free resources, you know, your channel example, you know, what I'm saying uh, that people could take advantage of to help them get into, you know, these or get these certifications and everything. So uh, yeah. appreciate you saying that. But um so let me let me roll into this as well. Um, programming languages. Do you know any programming languages? And can you, I guess, recommend any programming languages that people should learn? Um, or? I'm 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 not a programmer, but uh -huh. I'm kind of I kind of understand some of the programming languages a little bit. So I know people ask me this all the time, even though I tell them I don't. I'm not really a programmer. Mm -hmm. But if you were to learn, learn programming, I would tell people to learn Python. Yeah, <laughs> like go out there and learn Python as soon as you can, because Python is like uh, they kind of consider it like a, a glue language, mm -hmm. meaning it allows for you to do so many different things on the back end and the front end of computer systems, networks or application development or whatever it is that you're trying to do. And, you know, depending upon you know, my fact, my old job where I was actually doing IT research, I used to work with a dude who came straight out of college he was he did python he dealt with ruby on rails and he would show me some of the things that he was doing to uh you know uh build the site to have the website have certain functionalities and mm -hmm. you know it was pretty cool i mean it's 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 one of those things that's kind of on my my to-do list as well is to learn another language but i would say start off with python mm -hmm. uh because you know it's ingrained in everything then you know maybe go out there and learn something related to java mm -hmm. or um what else what else is another one python java uh, uh c plus plus c c sharp you know all those yeah, yeah older it, languages guess, yeah those languages i guess it depends exactly as to where you're gonna utilize them because what, what i'm saying is I don't really want people to just go out there and just start getting search just to get search. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One, that's it, it, it's going to be a waste. It could be be potentially a waste of your time and money. Yeah, I tell people go out there and get search because the job that you're trying to go after dictates you need to have this certification. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I know Python is really big in the programming world. Yeah, and like I say, I'm not a programmer. Mm -hmm. but I have read up on it, but so I would say I would say learn Python. Yeah, so. yeah, and I and I agree with that. You know, that's one of the you know up and coming you know programming languages that well, it's getting like super popular. Everybody's using it for every you know all different things in IT. So, and then mm -hmm. also what I could add to that though, uh, once you learn one programming language. Um, you can you understand the concepts of pretty much all of them because they all have variables. They all have, you know, different different functions and stuff. Yeah, you, you have to understand the libraries and understand it may be written slightly different, but it's still the same thing, essentially. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that's exactly right. But um, I, I wanted to, um, I guess, ask as well. Um, since we, you know, on programming and all that stuff, and that's tying into, you know, future technologies or whatever. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts and how do you think that will affect the IT 
world or jobs and stuff, especially when you start talking about automation, IT automation, because that's one of the things Python is tying to uh, a lot yeah. of IT automation as well as, you know, automation in general. And so what what are your thoughts on that in the future? You know, um, as jobs go and uh, well, you're going to have to learn this stuff. Now, you don't you may not have to become a subject matter expert, like you're going to become the next Mark Zuckerberg or the next keep it techie or the next me or the mm-hmm. next whoever's out there. But you may, you're going to have to have a, a somewhat deeper understanding than just the ability to hit the power button and start surfing the web because, you know, down here where I live, I live in Orlando. They are literally training kids as young as eighth and ninth grade to prepare them to enter the IT world. And what I mean is they're act, they're actively recruiting kids out of middle school. So when they go to high school, starting their freshman year, they'll have these kids learning IT fundamentals, A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus, and they're going to have all these certs before they graduate high school. In addition to they're having these kids do some, some work with a local community college down here to where these kids will be, in addition to the certs, they'll also have a an associate's degree. All mm-hmm. this stuff coming out of high school – with their high school diploma to where they can jump straight into the market. And if they want to bypass college, just go straight to the workforce. You know, you talk about an 18 year old kid who might come out the gate making 30, 40, $50,000 a year within his first two years or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to learn this stuff because this is a clear indication that we're not rewinding the clock, going back to the stone age, you know, Mm -hmm. going back to, 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 to the days of your mama and them or when I was a kid back in the 80s. Everything is technology driven mm-hmm. thanks to this whole social distancing thing going on. And, you know, this is not about they're not about to rewind the clock. They're going to keep moving forward. As a matter of fact, I get I get phone calls every other day from our district, um, Orange County um, School District, asking me, how do I want my son to go to school? or my two kids to go to school because my oldest starts ninth grade and then his younger brother starts kindergarten this year. And they have, they're asking parents, do you want to do virtual school, a combination, or do you want them to all go back? And, you know, they just wear their little masks and do the social distancing thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, this, this is, this is becoming our life now. Yeah. And this is the same way with um, just any other job out there. So I'm saying this because, all of this is driven by technology. <laughs> you know, the mere fact that we're able to communicate with each other via YouTube, OBS, or whatever, you know, platform you're using to make this happen, mm. whether you're using, uh, uh, what, what is the other one called that everybody uses? Zoomcast or whatever. Yeah. This is all technology driven. Somebody has to build all this stuff. Mm. Or if you want to talk about automation, um, Walmart. They are currently trying to phase out cashiers. Yeah, I've seen the articles. <laughs> and replace them with self-checkout machines. Why? Because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. Even though a self-checkout machine is just a, a quote-unquote robot or a piece of software or whatever, a combination of the two, somebody still has to be able to fix that machine if it goes down. So what if you're the guy who wins the contract to fix all the, all the machines? Mm-hmm. Down here in Orlando... We have the world's biggest McDonald's down here off of a street called International Drive. You go up in there, they have giant kiosks. I I call them giant iPads. Mm -hmm. You go up there and punch your order on the screen. It sends it to the person in the back. You go sit down and somebody delivers the food to your table. There's no need for a cashier. They have self-driving trucks. You know, we all know Uber is out there trying to make self-driving vehicles. Down here in Orlando, again, there's this area called Lake Nona which is not too far from the airport. And it was like way the hell on the other side of town from where I live at. But um, they are currently trying, well, I know last year before this whole social distancing thing hit, they have driverless taxi cab vehicles that, you know, pretty much operate within like a two or three block radius, just picking people up, driving them around and, you know, kind of seeing how that thing goes. It was like a really big deal. And, you know, if they can get that technology down packed, well, what do you think is going to happen with, the transportation industry in general. So what I'm saying is technology is everywhere. You don't have to be a subject matter expert, but you need to have an appreciation for it and a willingness to potentially learn it to try to fit it in your life somehow, because 
you're going to be impacted by it. Even me, like even my job, what I do can be automated away. And mm-hmm. pretty much everybody, no matter what kind of job you got, like I was talking with a lawyer not too long ago. She, uh, she interviewed me for her podcast about two or three weeks ago. And she was like, my job could be automated away. And this is a, this, this, this chick is uh she, she does, she's a lawyer for the federal government doing whatever she does. Wow. But you know, as a matter of fact, you just go on web, go on websites like legal zoom, mm-hmm. <laughs> they have all this stuff up there ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So nobody's safe out there. I'm not saying that you have to be an expert. I keep saying that again because I know a lot of people think, oh, I need to be an expert. No, you don't. You just need to learn how to utilize it because a lot of people know how to utilize the technology from a consumer standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you're creating, you go on Instagram, you make your videos, and you get a whole bunch of likes and shares, and you're the man out in these streets. And that's fine and dandy, especially if you know how to monetize it. But you know, just think about what if you know how to work on the back end of that thing where you're actually developing the applications or the APIs and all this other stuff that ties into these apps to make it a more robust application, make it more functional that you can turn around and sell that thing or, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, these are just things you want to consider because IT is literally ingrained in everything that we do and it's only going to get, it's only going to kick up more. Um, you want to talk about 5G. Everybody's on this conspiracy theory, 5G, oh, is you know, 5G is going to, you know, turn us all into aliens or something, whatever the heck they're saying. Mm-hmm. What 5G is really going to do is 5G is really going to accelerate this automation process. Yes, it is. If you want driverless vehicles and all that stuff, well, it needs 5G because mm-hmm. it's a super fast version of, of basically the Internet, Wi-Fi, however you want to phrase it. Mm-hmm. That's really what's going to kick this thing into overdrive. So you might want to be conscious about this instead of just treating it as as something that's cool because you might mess around and it'd be a robot doing your job <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> like, it's the reality of the world we're living in exactly so. cool so um well that's that's pretty much the interview what i like to do at the end uh is kind of get people to ask questions if they have any questions uh but let me ask you this uh engineering cannabis says in the chat um do you know anything about databases or database languages and all that stuff? I know that that's my job. That's what I do. But I mean, I guess he want to know if you. Uh, no. Well, no and yes. So what do I mean? So my last job, I was a research. I did product research for a bunch of Fortune 500 companies. Okay. And one, of the, one of the things that I had to do, I had to go in there and analyze all of their database software. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and I mean, analyze it to the point where I had to figure out every single capability that this piece of software could do to the point where I knew how the software operated better than the person who was actually hired to utilize it okay. because there was stuff that they didn't know about it. So I know a lot about it from a theoretical standpoint because I had to research it and read tech manuals galore to try to understand what the heck was going on. But I don't have experience dealing with them because I've never been in a position to deal with a database. But if you want to learn database languages, you know, you got MySQL or MySQL out there. Mm. Uh, what, what's the other one? It's, it's, it's another one. Microsoft SQL. And then they got, um, what's the other one? Uh, Oracle. Oracle. Yeah. Oracle. Yeah. So, you know, those, those are like some of the big ones that, you know, you would have to, especially that, that Microsoft SQL, that's, that's something you're going to have to learn. But, you know, you get proficient at that. You can make a lot of money doing it. Matter of fact, there's another YouTuber out there uh, named Sub Zero Three Six Nine or something mm-hmm. like that. Just type Sub Zero, brother. He, he, uh, matter of fact, he and I went to college together at the same time, but we okay. didn't know each other. Yeah. But um, he actually teaches database. Like he mm-hmm. has his own IT curriculum dedicated towards educating people on database stuff and helping them get jobs. So if that's something you're into. You know, I will go try to holler at that brother and see what he got cracking over there. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, so if anybody got any other questions, I mean, I don't want to hold G. Larry too long. I just wanted to, you know, prick it, pick his brain a little bit. But um, it, ask away if you got any questions. Um, and also sub to his channel. I put the link down in the um in the chat uh i know i only got like 13 people in here you know i appreciate you guys showing up you know what i'm saying but um i think a lot of you guys are already sub to g lowry but if you're not just going on sub to g lowry because he he has some good stuff over there uh 
So let's see. And yeah, yeah, I know a lot about Sub Zero. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, his his training and stuff. I've talked to a couple of people that actually went through his training. Um, and um, you know, he, he sets him up for success, you know. He um he knows what he's talking about when it comes to uh, databases. So Yeah. Yeah. So I, I see some people saying that they know they know me from my other YouTube channel. And look, I appreciate all that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, we all we all know how that channel, my original YouTube channel, is structured. Um, and for those who are wondering why I actually set up this other channel, is because I wanted to present different content, more educational content, actual content that can actually help you in real time style content, instead of you know me doing what I normally do on my other channel, which really is just me just running my mouth talking about my feels but it mm -hmm. really doesn't <laughs> it really doesn't bring you any value at the end of the day other than you might get a giggle or two out of the deal <laughs> but um i really wanted to be like okay i can sit here and complain about all the things i complain about or which i do i'm pretty good at that don't, don't get it <laughs> but i also want to present another dynamic of you know hey instead of just complaining here's something that i've done for 20 years of my life and this is what I know, and that's how the Tech G channel comes into play. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Tech G channel, that's my tech IT channel, where the primary focus is to talk about entry level IT. Like, because I know some people ask me about higher level certs, and if I'm ever teach that, I'm like, maybe, maybe I, I don't know. But right now, the focus is just to teach entry level IT and the original focus is really geared towards black people. And I'm not, now this is not to say that anybody can't go watch my channel. I don't care what color you are. If you want to support it and learn it, that's cool. Cause I've had, you know, white students and other students learn from my stuff, but I really started with the intention of trying to educate black people because mm -hmm. you know, like you and I both know, there's just not a lot of black people in it. Exactly. Like, there's one, well, there's been plenty of instances over my career where I was like the only black person around mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? and 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 so somebody and i'm bringing this up because somebody asked me on my channel they asked me a question I, I meant to do a video on this it was like what benefit should do black would black people bring to it that white people haven't already done and i sat around for like a week thinking about this like wow that's like a really profound question yeah deep. and i think and here's the thing i came up with an answer and surprisingly, I heard rapper T.I. say my answer. Wow. T.I. was on The Breakfast Club. You know, he had said it before I had a chance to get it out of my brain. And T.I. said exactly what I said. I think the biggest benefit is providing more faces in the industry, showing other people that we're out here, too. Mm -hmm. you know, we're all like this out here playing ball, trying to rap, do this, do that. Like, you can be this as well. So I think that right now that's probably one of the major benefits of being a black person in it is just showing more black faces mm -hmm. because, you know, I've started looking up more and more black it content creators on YouTube. I'm coming across, you know, like obviously you sub zero, the black brain trust. There's like two black females, two or three black women that I'm sub to on YouTube. They're, they're all about cybersecurity. Yeah. And I'm sub to them and I'm learning from them. So I think, you know, that is the major benefit is just showing that, hey, there are a bunch of us out here, you know, even though collectively across the board, we only make up like they say the stats is around like 7 percent in IT, which is not a lot. But I just think if we need more people so that we can show them, and especially with these young kids out here, like, hey, mm. yeah, this, this isn't just something that white people, Asians and and, you know, people from the Mideast do. You know, you could do this, too, if you really want. So. Yeah. Nah, man, great points, great points. That's and that's, I'm I'm glad you're saying that because that's kind of why I've been teaching my my kids. You know, when I get a chance, they they um like my youngest son, he's learning you know how to program uh a little bit, and it's tailored towards games. So he plays the yeah. old Roblox, Roblox and all that stuff. But he also is learning how to code those games, and that's you know a good thing. And then my son. Yeah. My oldest son, he plays, I mean, he's learning kind of the graphics design part, which is like Blender, uh, you know, and making the characters, building the characters and all that stuff. 
So, now, and that stuff is very important because you know my older son, he's in the video games as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, you know, you can play the games all you want. I used to play games back in the day too, but I tell my son. What if I had to learn how to make the games? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, what if I was one of them people who made the game, sold it for to EA Sports or whatever? You know, we, we'd be you know sitting around here riding around in Lamborghinis or something right now. Yeah. But I'm just like, <laughs> think about all the opportunities that can come from you. You know, you actually making something that you're passionate about because mm-hmm. you know, you know, like I, like I tell everybody, you know, everybody thinks when you enter IT. I think I think people think on this grandiose scale of becoming the next Mark Zuckerberg, making yeah. a whole platform that directly impacts how people think and maneuver and act. And that's cool. But I always say Mark Zuckerberg started off in the dorm room in Harvard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. When nobody knew who Mark Zuckerberg was, he spent hours coding this website up for, you know, the, the, the two twins that came up with the idea originally until it became this monsters this, this monstrosity that it is today mm-hmm. but you know so there's just so many applications that like i said if you like playing video games keep playing them but you know if, if you know if you got kids see if they're interested in the other side of video games not just the front end where they're yep. looking at it and clicking it but see if they might be interested in the back end because my father works in it right he, he works in it as well so it's my father my youngest brother and me my father always comes over and gets my oldest son. Like, matter of fact, my, my dad, he just got finished. He got a new house. And he was in there building a home entertainment system. And, you know, from, from scratch, with the whole computer and all that crap. He brought my son over there and had my son help him build this thing with him. So now my mm. son, even though he doesn't understand what he's doing, I mean, he, well, he understands what he's doing, but he doesn't see down the line. It's like, dude, you're yeah. doing things. You're over here learning about motherboards and all these various components, and you're actually building stuff and putting it together. Like, dude, if you get really good at this, you could be the man out in these streets by the time you're 18 years old to where you go get a job or start your own business mm-hmm. installing other people's stuff. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's just, uh, you know, so like I said, if, if you're a parent out there with kids, because, you know, if you want them to kind of consider this, introduce, like, look at what, look at what your kids like to do. They like to play games. They like to do this. They like to do that. Great. That's that's fine and dandy. But just slowly try to introduce them to the, introduce them to things that are related to that game that deals with IT it, or something in STEM in general, mm-hmm. just to see if it sparks their interest and if it because you know you might be surprised. So just just try to do that if you want to work it into your kid's life. So. Yep. 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 Good advice. Good advice. But um, so it looks like um, nobody's really asking any. Oh well, somebody's asking. Do you have an email? Do you want oh, to put yeah. your email out there? Or yeah, uh, here I'll type it in the chat. It's hold on, what is it? Techgclass at gmail dot com. So my website is actually called Technology G. I know people ask me about it. Why do you call it that? Because you know somebody bought the original domain name that I actually wanted to use. So mm. <laughs> I had to go with technology G, but I'm just typing it here as well. Okay. But technology G, my email is right there. Um, the website, I mean, the, the, the YouTube channel is tech G. Like I said, it's pretty much entry level stuff. I start off with it fundamentals. I have a full blown course up there. I'm currently building my a plus. I got about 10 or 11 videos up. And I'll just be dropping them as soon as I make the content. Then I'll roll on to the Network Plus and maybe Security Plus. But these are just entry-level certs all on YouTube for free. I don't charge anything for them. You know, I do charge for if you want, like, study. If you want my personal study notes that I will use to pass the certification, I do charge for that. But the actual meat of the content is free. And just go out there and get it popping, you know, if that's what you want want to do. Cool, and I'll put your website in there right fast, but let me see. Say I got a nine-year-old to help build a game computer. He was so excited. Set up a room. Yeah, man. Yeah, get your kids involved in, you know, learning this technology early, even though they, you know, they learning it in school. Like my my kids, you know, they're all rem- they were all remote for the last two years. Well, not remote, but homeschool for the like the last two years. Um, and this year, because of COVID starting, uh, I don't know about where you're from, 
But I know here in Nevada, they just approved all the schools here in Nevada um, to homeschool. So, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, try to get your try to get your um your kids involved in technology, man. But if we don't have any more questions, we'll go on and end it. But I just want to. I'm I'm glad I was able to you know we was able to collab and come together. Uh, if you need me to come on your channel for anything, if you want to do a live stream or whatever, just let me know. You know I'm I'm always available. You know after I get around my get out get out of my uh, my job. You know. But yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we can set something up, man. I just got to get through this A plus material first, mm -hmm. and then I, then I'll start. You know, doing other things right now, but right now my main focus is to finish putting up this content for the hardware test for the A plus cert. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm glad you brought that up early. I meant to say that, and I forgot. But uh, that's exactly what I'm doing with this uh, Linux certification that I'm finna take. Um, mm -hmm. I set a hard date, and I'm studying. You know, and once I reach that hard date, you know, I'm gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's good advice. Good advice. Yeah, but I appreciate you, G, man. Thank you again. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody, please go check out um, uh, Tech G channel. Uh, you guys um, have a good one, man. Um, anything else you wanted to say? I'm sorry, G. Nah, man. That's it, man. Like I say, all things technology related. My website, technologyg.com. That's, that's all. That's it. I appreciate cool. being on the show, though, man. I appreciate that, though. Yeah, no problem. No problem, man. And I put his link in the chat, guys. So you guys have a good one. Peace.